Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door. So today's video is a sew along for the Atelier Jupe Emma blouse. So I'm wearing one. Uh, this is the first one I made so I kind of consider this as my wearable toile. And then this is the second one I made which I lengthened into a dress. So the Atelier Jupe Emma blouse has lots of features. It's it really excited me when I saw it being launched. So I've just pulled my cuffs down. So yeah, this is my wearable toile. So I made this from a Lady McElroy cotton lawn. Um, I thought it was a good choice for the f for the blouse for my first time to make it because of the lovely pin tucks that are across the yoke part here. I thought it would be easier for uh, pleating and pressing and sewing. Uh, but I made it from one of the Atelier Jupe viscoses and I found it just as easy. So yeah. So anyway, on to the design features of this. So it has a yoke section here at the top which has pin tucks, so seven pin tucks. The last one cleverly covers the, which is the last one, this is the last one, cleverly covers the seam between the yoke and the bodice where the little gathers are. It's not overly gathered but gathered enough to give it the nice gathered feature. It's got a sleeve which gathers into a long cuff, so nice poofiness but not too much. No poofing, no gathering at the top at all. And then it's got this lovely collar which has a collar stand and a little frill. Now I really like this, I'm not a massive fan of high collars but this one is really comfortable so there's, there's room there. Uh, I have forward shoulders so I do find that sometimes the necks will choke me but this actually fits really really well. It's got a little opening at the back and a hook and eye to close the collar at the back. Now generally if I have a top that has a button at the back I don't close it um, because I always find it a little bit restricted but no this one is really really good and yeah nice deep cuffs. So my wearable toile, I had to make a few alterations to fit me and my body and everybody's different. So my alterations may not be the alterations that you need. So I measure up to a size 38. Now I fall exactly into a size 38. But I have found that while I've made a lot of Atelier Jou patterns, sizing down fits me better. So I generally then make a 36 on top and I grade out to a 38 on the hips because I need that bit of extra wiggle room. I do find as well that the Atelier Jupe patterns are just about the right length for me in their blouses. In fact I think I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. So it comes to just about my hip. I would like it a smidge longer. The sleeves are a bit long for me but that's fine because I'm so short. I have short arms. So um, on my next one I made the sleeve an inch shorter. I have narrow shoulders so I always do a narrow shoulder adjustment and I think that was basically it for what I needed to fit me. So when I'm laying out my pattern pieces you will see that I've got a few adjustments made to them. So size wise with the pattern it goes from a size 34, which is a UK 6, to a size 52, which is a UK 24. And that is for size 6 is a bust 33, waist 27, hips 36. Um, I would like if they had one size smaller so that it would fit Karis, my daughter, who is always just a size smaller, but that's fine. And the size 24 UK is a bust of 50 and a half, a waist of 44 and a hip of 52. And as I say, I usually find that their sizes are a little bit generous. There's also a finished measurement chart as well. It's all in centimetres, so you can have a little read of that. And then the materials that you need are from a size 34 to a size 42 you need 1.5 and then if you want to go from a size 44 to a 52 you need between 1.55 to 1.8. You also need a little bit of interfacing. I'm using a Vylene product which is H180 which I really like and you also need a little button or a hook and eye at the back and a matching thread obviously. So 
I think that's a good roundup of the pattern. Um, I'm going to show you now the pattern pieces. When you when you print out your pattern pieces, uh, there's not a lot of information on the actual pattern, so the names of each pattern piece are not on it. But they do have a full sheet here, which tells you what the pattern pieces are according to the number. So they've got a number on each of them, and it also tells you what the seam allowances are for it. But what I really like about the Atelier Jou patterns, which is quite similar to the style art patterns, is when you print them out, you have your cutting line and you also have your seam allowance line, which I really like because I often find with indie patterns, I have to read through the entire booklet to find out what the seam allowance is. And this is this, these pattern pieces are quite similar as well to Style Arc, where they do smaller uh, seam allowances around, say, the neckline and the collar pieces, which I think makes perfect sense because it saves fabric when you're cutting it out and it saves you having to do extra trimming off, which, yeah, again, I find completely makes sense. I like it. It's not for everybody, but um, yeah, that's what I what I like. So I've laid out my pattern and I've just done a little recce with my pattern pieces. So I'm going to turn the camera and give you a little look at that. So here are my pattern pieces just roughly laid out on the fabric. So that is the back piece there. That's the front lower half. This is the front yoke sleeve. This is the little frill for the collar. This is the collar stand. I have to cut that twice, so I've left lots of room there. This is a little piece for the back, and this is the cuff. So, what I've done is these two pattern pieces here have to go onto folds, and these three pattern pieces up here need interfacing. So, initially, I had a second thought about this, <laughs> so I've it laid out like this so that I can cut the fabric across here and then I can cut these two pattern pieces here on two folds and then I'm going to cut this piece here so that I can interface all this piece. So I'm going to block interface that and then I'm going to cut out these pieces uh, separately, which I think I am going to do. But I've made two of these, well I've made the blouse of the dress already and there's a little slit here at the top of the back so that you can um, put it over your head basically and I'm thinking if you wanted you could easily cut out this piece here with a seam allowance down the back so that you wouldn't have to cut and fold and fold and you could leave a little slit at the top here and just like top stitch it down rather than using that piece up there, which I know I've put there. I only need one piece, but it is on two pieces of fabric at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's just that's just another another thought. So I'm going to go ahead now, cut there. I'm going to cut there and I'm going to cut all my pattern pieces out and then I'm going to show you all the important notches and the little markings on it.
So I have my piece of fabric here that I cut off at the very top of the, the pieces and I've actually ironed the interfacing onto the full amount. I just find this so much easier. There's very little extra waste um, and it's just so much easier to cut out because those little collar pieces can be really faffy to cut out and then interface and then you know iron the interfacing on so I find if I get my piece of fabric interface it and then cut out my pieces it is so much easier if you haven't tried it <laughs> give it a go it works Okay, so I've all my pattern pieces cut out and we're going to do a little assessment. So this is the little facing piece for the back where the slit is. So we don't have to do anything with that, just leave it to one side for the moment. This is the frill for the neck, so I've cut it out on the fold. Again, there's no markings on that. This is our collar stand and I have two pieces of this cut on the fold. There's a little notch here, which is going to be very helpful when we're sewing that on because that lines up with the shoulder seam. So I'm going to give that a little snip. Here's our cuff, so nice and deep. And you can see that we have some notches here and they line up to the parts on the sleeve. So really handy to notch each of those. When it comes to putting that on, the notches will make sense. Here's my front piece, which I cut a little bit longer, and we've got a notch up here to show where our gathering is. Now, I've actually got two notches because I cut out two sides, two sizes, so I'm going to clip my notch there. Then we have our back piece. We have a little mark here, and that indicates where we're going to actually cut down as far as for the opening and that is oh yeah we have the notches there to signify the front or the the sleeve so fold that up then we have our sleeve piece again we've got the three notches here which are going to line up when we're putting our cuff on and then we have notches here on our sleeve head. This one shows the front, so just a single notch. And here shows the back. So I'm going to do all little snips in all of my notches. And then this is the fun piece for the, for the notches. So I took my time when I was cutting this out and I got all my shape quite accurate here at the side. And it's very important to do that because when all of your tucks are done, this actually works out in like a little very clean shape. It's really like magic. So we have our lines across here. What I'm going to do is do a little snip on each of these. And then I'm going to put a pin here and I'm going to show you how I'm actually going to mark in all the tucks. And we're actually going to start with the tucks because I think it's always good to get the worst part over first. So here's my uh, pattern piece. I've got my little notches here at the side, laid it out here on my cutting mat, and I've actually got some spray starch. And I'm going to give it a little spray, because I'm just thinking this is going to make 
doing those pleats a little bit easier. So I'm going to give that a little iron. So that's going to make it a little bit stiffer and easier to use. So here I am back. Um, that's given it body. And I've lined it up according to the straight edge for some of the lines here on my cutting board. And what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to use my pencil and if I could find my quilting ruler I would but I can't so I'm going to use this ruler that I have and basically I have my notches marked and I'm going to draw a line from one notch to the other across. Here's one, I don't know if you can see that but I can actually see it. Here's one I tried. So just look for my notch. Where's my next notch? There it is. Just holding onto this here. Draw my notch, draw my line across. Now what I plan to do is just put a pin in the middle of each line. So that's the one I did before I started the camera. Here's this one. Here's my next. Now the darker your fabric is, of course, the easier it is to see these lines. <clears throat> There's my next one. I'm going to continue that down to the last one. Okay, so I'm ironing the creases in and honestly, the spray starch is the game changer. So I started at the bottom and I'm working my way up. I'm using the pin in the middle to just to make sure that I have got my lines straight. So I'm pinching the little notch and the notch Ironing across to the pin, and then right across. There's seven pin tucks in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. So oh, we're on the last one. And again, I am finding that if I pinch one pin tuck, pin, pinch the other and kind of semi stretch it out, um, the pin is right in the center. So that's actually, that's good. That's making me feel happy that I've cut it out straight and that I'm ironing them nice and straight. Of course we go. So then, that's how it looks. You can see all the creases across. And now it's time to do the, f the fun bit. Okay, so I'm here at my sewing machine, all set up, ready to sew my first fold. Mindy's helping. And what I'm going to show you is, um, we all have these lines on our stitch plates, and they show our seam allowance. So the seam allowance for the tucks is one centimetre, and there's there's my one centimetre. So from the needle to that line is one centimetre. So I'm going to put my fabric in through to sew, and I'm going to keep the edge of the fold there at the one centimetre line. So I'm going to backstitch a little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end, but I'm going to be very careful to keep my folded edge of the fabric in line with that one centimetre. So basically, come on now, fabric work with me. So that's how I'm going to sew.
so that's working out um, pretty well. So I'm going to continue on and do the other five. All seven tucks done. Now I'm not going to iron the tucks down yet because I have just found that it's uh, much easier to sew the yoke piece to the lower piece before these tucks have been ironed. So what I've done is I folded it in half because I forgot to mark the centre of this uh, before I took the pattern piece off and I've just cut a little notch to show me the centre piece or the centre mark. Here's my lower front piece and I've done the same. I've cut like a little notch there in the centre and I've also marked where this notch is here for the gathering. And I'm going to take off my pattern pieces. I take off my pattern pieces just as I need them because then if I have forgotten any notches or that, um, the pattern pieces, they're handy. So we're going to gather between the two little notches. So whatever your preferred way of gathering is, so you can do like a basting stitch on your sewing machine and you can gather it in. I just gather by hand. <laughs> it's just my thing. So I've got a double threaded needle. I'm starting at one notch and I'm just going to run a gathering thread across. I just find it faster. So I'm running my gathering thread across here. Now if I was doing a dress and a skirt um, I would use elastic to gather across. I would use this method of just needle and thread if I was doing, say, a puffed shoulder or a cuff, or I'll use this again for when I'm doing the neckline. I just find it faster there, like, I mean, it's done. So I'm going to pull it out so that I can see my centre notch. And I am basically going to match up my notches. So my centre notch and my centre notch. I'm going to put in a pin. I'm going to change the camera angle so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So now this makes far more sense, I think. Oh, you'll see that there's a little shape cut out here on the end and that matches up to this. So I'm going to put a pin there. I'm going to put a pin here to hold the two together at that notch. The same over on this side. And at this side, and then I'm going to find my needle, wherever it may be, over this side. My thread, where are you hiding on me? There. And I'm going to pull the gathers. Then I'm going to distribute them out. There's not a whole pile of them. Now I'm going to sew across there. So I'm going to sew right across and I'm going to just evenly distribute my gathers as I go.
There we go. So here's my pressed front piece. So I've pressed all the tucks downwards. Uh, I'm reasonably happy. Some of them are wonky, but uh, yeah, reasonably happy with them. So I'm going to put that to one side and I've grabbed my back piece. Now, here's a little tip that I've learned from making two. Here's the facing for the back. Here's the back piece. I've still got the pins on. Here's the little mark that we need to cut down as far as. But rather than cut down as far as, I've just actually ironed down as far as that. I'm going to take my pins out. I've also overlocked around the three sides of the little facing. So the top of the facing has a slight little curve on it. That's how you'll know which side not to overlock. Wouldn't be the end of the world if you did, but anyway. So, now oh, you can see my creased side there. Now I'm going to put my facing on top, so I'm matching up the centre. I'm just putting pins down through the middle of it. Then I'm going to flip it over. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew, starting with a zigzag, down as far as the end of where I've pressed a little bit further down and I'm going to pivot and sew back up and then I'm going to cut it after. So I've moved my pins to the side I'm sewing and I'm just going to start sewing. So I guess I'm about four, three, four millimetres away from the crease line. Here's the end of the crease. Now I'm going to veer in up there, just do another back stitch, put it around, I'm actually going to sew across, it's only two stitches, back in, and I'm going to sew back up to the top again. tried it a few different ways and this has definitely been the most successful way for me. I don't know if you can, you can see where is the seam. <laughs> oh there it is. So you should be able to see that. I'm going to cut down to the end of that now. I'm cutting along my crease. I'm going to cut into each of the corners. Now you could sew right into a point, do a back stitch, and then go back up the other side. Um, I've tried that. It did work too, but I think this is easier. So I'm going to bring this to the iron now iron it and then I'm actually going to top stitch it. This is how the little facing looks like on the inside. Um, as I said at the beginning, if you cut out the back with a seam, you could just sew up as far as here and then leave this gap open and then you could turn in your seam allowance here. So I think it would be an easier way of doing it, apart from the fact that you would be distorting the pattern on the back, but yeah, this is fine too. I am now going to sew my shoulder seams and press them flat, and then I'm going to grab my collar pieces. So I'm not actually going to sew my side seams yet. 
I like to be able to manoeuvre around as much as I can when I'm putting the collar in. It just makes life easier. Now here we are with our collar pieces. So this is the collar stand, this is the collar frill, and I've just consulted my a sheet of paper here where it tells me all of my seam allowances. So this is what I meant at the beginning when I was telling you about the seam allowances. Will that focus there? So you can see the broken line here shows the seam allowance. So that's a one centimetre seam allowance there. And same on here. So I just find that so, so handy. So the rest of the garment has 1.5. So I sewed the shoulder seam with a 1.5 seam allowance. So here's the little frill. What I'm going to do is fold this in half here. And I'm going to sew here with one centimetre and here on the other side. And then I'm going to fold it right side out and I'm going to give it a press. Here are my two collar stand pieces. So they're cut out on the fold. I love the way all the colours are showing through it. Uh, which one would I use for the front side? Uh, I think I'll use this one for the front. This is going to be the back. So. What I'm going to do at the back is I'm going to iron up the one centimetre seam allowance here. Oh, and this is the fun of sewing with cats. <laughs> so I'm going to fold that up and I'm going to iron right across the bottom end of that. So here's our pieces. This is the front one. Um, I've done a little notch there showing the front. This is the back piece of the collar stand and you can see I've ironed up the one centimetre. Here's my frill. Again, I've notched the centre. We have to gather this frill and again, I'm going to gather it with a needle and thread. But as I said, you can gather whatever way you fancy. And I'll come back to you when that is gathered. So we have one sleeping cat here and then we have one cat who has taken my seat. So here we are. Uh, I've gathered it up and now I'm just marking my centre notches. I'm lining up my centre notches. My uh, seam allowance here is a centimetre so I'm keeping the edge in by one centimetre. And same over here. And again now I'm going to stretch that out. I'm actually going to tie off my thread here. It's raining outside and if you hear any banging, it's the dog scratching at the back door because now he wants to come in because Five minutes ago, he wanted to go outside. So I'm going to pop some pins along here. I'm sure you're probably looking at my gathers thinking Oh, the machine basting would be so much easier. But, as they say, you do you, I'll do me. It's whatever you get used to, isn't it? I like these magnetic pin cushions, but um, yeah, they're hard enough to pull the pins out of sometimes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along inside the seam allowance. So the seam allowance is one centimetre, so maybe half a centimetre or almost a centimetre. I'm going to sew the frill down to the facing, but I'm going to let the dog in first. So this is what it looks like. So I've done my basting stitch. Let 
breaking a little bit. Sorry about the darkness today, it's just a horrid day outside. There you can see, and I've actually just given it a quick little rub with the iron because it just makes sewing the next step easier. And these are all tips I've picked up from sewing two already. So here's the under band, I guess we could call it. And I'm going to pin that in place. What I like about the Atelier Jupe pattern pieces is that they're so nicely drafted that on every step everything just falls nicely into place. That's really good. All the pattern pieces line up and yeah, I like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew using my one centimeter seam allowance from all across here. And then I'm going to make sure that my little frill is just pushed out of the way. And I'm gonna come back and sew this seam here. So I'm gonna sew across here. Okay, so I have that seam done. I've been abandoned by cats, the dogs are quiet. <laughs> here is how it looks on that side. And then just show you on this side. So this is, let me see, if I can get this to focus, you can see there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off that corner and I'm actually going to trim down this seam halfway and I'm going to take off that seam allowance. So basically I'm going to trim that down like that, take that corner off and then trim back this seam so it's going to be much much less bulky inside. And then I'm going to use my point turner to push out my points. Now I never had one of these in my life and I always used, oh I have a cat back, always used a chopstick until we did last year's advent calendar. So. 2021 advent calendar and we had a point turner and there was a spare one for me and honestly I haven't used a sewing tool as much as this. So I'm constantly pushing points out. Constantly kept company by various animals. So the trick is not to push too hard. I am now going to, let me see, that's how it looks now. So I'm going to, I'm going to give that a little press now. I always press as I go because I always find it makes the next step much easier. Hello. So now we're on to joining the collar to the neckband. So I've put a notch here for my centre front. There's my shoulder seam and there's my back seam. So the first thing I'm going to do is pin, you can see my notch there. I'm going to pin that to the centre front. And I'm going to line up the back. Line up my shoulder seam with the notch here as well. And the seam over here on the other side. I'm going to go to the back first. So that the seam allowance is one centimeter again. And that is the length of this little piece here that you can see. Match up my shoulder seams. Yeah, they're still open. And I'll probably put another pin here in between the centre front and the shoulder seam. There's not that much easing needed to get this collar in, I find. So it goes in very easily. So 
so basically just have to sew that seam. Make sure that my shoulder seams are staying nice and flat. It's very easy for them to kind of twist underneath there. Making sure I have no puckers as I go, but as I say, you don't have to do much easing. It all just seems to slot into place, which is really nice. ever so with too many pins. I find that I can just manipulate things a bit easier without pins. Sometimes the more pins I put in, uh, the more tucks I can achieve, believe it or not. Okay, we can have a little rub in a minute, okay? Hop down. Nearly at the end. Have we any tucks? Oh, a little one there in the centre. <laughs> okay. Have a look from the underside. Oh, nice little one. Anyway, get our stitch ripper out. Just going to undo a couple of stitches. And I re sew from this side. And keep a better eye. There we go. Nothing the iron wants to do that. So I'm going to clip some little clips in along here and uh, trim the seam down again. And just tidy it up from threads and things. So this is how it looks now on the inside. So I've trimmed my seam. I've ironed all of that seam inside the collar stand. And it's actually looking really well. It's all very pleased with that. So what you can do now is pin down the collar stand facing to the inside and you can top stitch on the outside. What I prefer to do, um, because I just like the look of it better, is I'm actually going to hand stitch this down because I prefer that like no sign of any stitching on the outside look. <laughs> so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to slip stitch that closed now and then I'm going to sew my hook and eye on the back of it there while I'm at it. And this is so much easier to do before the side seams are done, before the leaves go in, because you can just work on the flat. Okay, so I have the collar stitched on. Just see a little thread. That's how it looks. It's just so cute. This is the back. So I have the hook and eye on the inside, and that's the little opening of it. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to put the right sides together. Um, I have a cat on my lap helping. Stop. Um, I'm going to do the side seams and then I am going to grab my sleeve pieces. I'm going to overlock those. I'm going to make sure that I can see my notches for the gathering at the bottom and for the notches on the shoulder. And then I'm down to my last piece. So I have the cuff pieces here. 
Um, so we're on we're on the home stretch. <laughs> I'm gonna do my overlocking and uh, then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got what have I got here? <laughs> A big pile of fabric. I have sewn my side seams up and I've pressed them to one side. That's my heater clicking on because it is so cold today. I've also overlocked around the side, the underarm seams and the, I've, I've overlocked around the sleeves and I've actually done the side seam. So I have cut my little notches and I can actually see them there for the back and for the top of the sleeve where it joins the shoulder and the front. So I've got those two done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the cuffs. So I have, here's my cuffs, it seems like forever since I interfaced them. I've got my three notches there that match up to the notches on the bottom of the sleeves. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew the side seams. So here's my notches at the top. And I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to sew this seam here on them both. So I'm going to sew one of them. I'm going to sew the other one and then I'm going to iron this seam flat and on one end um, I've got my notches just done on one side so on the other end I'm actually going to iron down the seam allowance which I think is a centimetre and a half so essentially I'm going to end up with this so I'm going to do that for the two cuffs Okay, so I have the cuffs and yeah, it was a one and a half centimetre here and that was really handy because I was able to just look at the pattern piece and see that it was a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So we're on to more gathering. So basically I'm going to put the cuffs onto the sleeve before I put them into the blouse because I just find that handier. Um, I've already shortened the sleeve by an inch because that's what I figured out works for me. So we have the end of the sleeve here and we've got uh, our underarm seam, we've got three notches and we have our cuff which has the same under seam, three notches. We are gathering again so I have my needle and thread. I mean if you don't like gathering this is just not the blouse for you is it? So I'm going to start my gathering at my underarm seam because that just makes sense doesn't it? So a couple of back stitches. I'm going to do my gathering around. I find this kind of therapeutic really to be honest. I do my gathering stitches within the seam allowance so I'm probably about half a centimetre from the edge of the seam. Sometimes I take the gathering stitches out, sometimes I don't bother. So on this part here I did take the gathering stitches out. Um, on the cuff here, probably won't, I'll just leave them there. On the collar I didn't take them out either. Now I am going to open out the gathering stitches. So the cuff as you can see has no opening so if you're somebody who likes to shove up your sleeves or fold them up, ain't gonna work on this blouse. Um, I have tried most of the day to pull them up, but there you go. So basically what I've got to do is put my put my hand into my cuff so my folded up seam allowance is there. I am going to grab my dangling needle because that always seems to disappear. So I have a double thread so it can't fall off the thread my seam under the arm and I'm going to basically bring the sleeve into the cuff. I'm just 
just going to gather up my gathering stitches just a little bit and now what I'm going to do is match up my underarm seam and pin the two together so there's the cuff there's the sleeve pin them together I have various size pins here and the big huge things keep coming out I'm going to have to sort out the pins. Now I am going to match my next notch up. I'm putting my pins into the sleeve side of it because I'm going to sew in the seam, um, in the sleeve. I know that will make sense to you when you see it in a minute. One, two, three, and looking for the fourth one. So I've got a pin on each of the notches and the underarm. Under I've got my needle and thread here and I'm just going to pull it until the sleeve and the cuff are the same size. And I'm going to do a back stitch now because I'm happy with that width. Cut off my thread. And that is how it looks basically. So now I'm going to put this under the machine and sew that seam together and I'm just going to ease out my gathering as I go. So I'm going to start at the under, I'm going to start at the seam and basically sew around. I'm not going to do a back stitch because I'm going to be sewing in a loop basically. Just it is a little bit fiddly because it's quite a narrow little spot to get into. But even if you think your gathers are going to look very random, they should look great at the end, so don't despair. Oops. That's one of those huge pins I need to take out. Very small little seam. Goodness knows if you could see any of that. Then this is how it looks. So I'm going to turn it inside out. And I'm going to give it, I think I'm going to give it a little iron so that I push the gathers up into the cuff. So here we are, two sleeves. <laughs> uh, it looks like we have a big long cuff. So I'm going to fold that in half and bring the folded edge up basically to the stitching. So it's going to look like that on the inside. I'm going to pin that carefully around. Then I'm going to slip stitch that because it's actually quite narrow and there's not a chance it's going to fit through like the free arm on the sewing machine. Um, I have absolutely no idea what they do in the pattern instructions for this but this is the way I like to do it and you know my sew alarms they don't exactly go with the <laughs> pattern instructions so yeah I'm gonna do basically yeah that's what it that's what it looks like I'm gonna slip stitch around again um, on both of them and then we are as far then as inserting the sleeves 
and they insert really easily there's no big ease stitching or anything like that um, I have found they've gone they've gone in really nicely they're well balanced so we'll be matching up the um, the back and front notches and then we'll be doing the hem and that's it so here's uh, my cuff I'm really enjoying this fabric <laughs> because no part of it looks the same it's really cool so basically yeah there's my sleeve right side out here is my blouse wrong side out and this is my left sleeve and I know that from the notches so I'm going to pop my sleeve into my blouse if I can and I'm going to match up all of my notches and I'm going to sew around and as I say this blouse doesn't need loads and loads of um, easing in it seems to just go in really easily uh, if you want to find out how I do the easing in of a sleeve that needs a lot of easing in uh, pop over to my other sew along of the Frida blouse and I've I've demonstrated that um, it's really dark today so it's very hard to get the camera on the sewing machine to get really up close action uh, so, but I do a really good I think it's really good <laughs> I do a really good demonstration of how I do my easing in so yeah pop over there to the um, to the Frida blouse so I'm basically going to insert the two sleeves. So I've matched up my underarm seam, I've matched up my notch on my front and on my back and on my shoulder. Um, I'm going to sew that in and then I'm going to put in the other seam or the other sleeve because I just find that I sew that in, I've less to be looking after <laughs> and then I'll pin the other one in. So it's all finished. Sleeves went in, no issues, no tucks, no pleats, no nothing. It was great. Uh, the sleeves are a lovely length. I've just turned up a two centimeter hem, so I overlocked it, turned up the hem, ironed it and top stitched it. Much prefer this little bit extra. So in summary, basically I cut out a 36, graded to a 38, did a narrow shoulder adjustment. This is what I had to do to make it fit me. Uh, but I measure as a 38, but I feel the 38 would be far too big. Um, and this is lovely and roomy. So this is where I usually need the bit of width. It feels really comfortable. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the sew along and uh, I hope you make yours. If you have any other little tips for say gathering, or interfacing or anything like that um, leave a message below in the comments have you made it have you made an Emma yet um, I'll definitely be making more I have more planned so thank you so much for watching and yes I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again soon bye